Today's homework lesson is about the Native Americans of North America that we sing about each class and we have been introduced to through the sentences for our vocabulary words. In this video, we will be answering the following questions. In which areas did American Indians live? Where do American Indians live today? How did geography and climate affect the way American Indian groups met their basic needs? And how did American Indians use natural resources? Before the Europeans came to North America, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of Native American tribes. But for our unit this year, we are going to be focusing on only five of those tribes. These are the Iroquois tribe, the Lakota Sioux tribe, the Pueblo tribe, the Kwakiutl tribe, and the Inuit tribe. Native Americans still exist today, but many of them live either on reservations or have integrated into American life and live in cities and towns all over our country. They may not dress in their cultural clothing from the past, but nevertheless, Native Americans are here. They may even be your neighbors working alongside of you. They come from a rich heritage, and we will be talking more about this in a later lesson. Follow along with your map and color in the region that each tribe lived in and draw pictures or write key words about the geography in each of these areas. Let's start with the Iroquois tribe in the northeast part of North America. You can color this region red. The Iroquois originally lived near Lake Ontario and along the Mohawk River in New York State. Around 1600, five tribes, the Mohawks, the Onidas, the Onondagas, the Cayugas, and the Senecas banded together to form a confederacy. You may have heard these Indian names before. A sixth tribe, the Tuscaroras, joined in 1722. The land on which the Iroquois lived was heavily forested, part of the eastern woodlands, which you may have heard about before again. Draw or write about this. Trees, forests, rivers, and lakes are all part of the geography of this area, home to the Iroquois tribe. Trees provided a major natural resource to this people group. Known as the people of the Longhouse, the Iroquois used sapling, or saplings called, or, which are baby trees, to bend over, forming the structural support of their longhouses, and patches of bark from mature trees for the walls. Draw a mini longhouse near the Iroquois on your map. Longhouses had very high ceilings, and were dry and cozy inside. Trees also provided canoes for the Native Americans to travel in and transport things down the rivers. The forested environment was thick with deer. This animal, when hunted, was a major na natural resource that offered the Iroquois tribe food from their meat called venison, clothing, and tools. Native Americans utilized the deer in many, many ways that we don't even think about. The Lakota Sioux tribe inhabited the Great Plains, flatlands in the Midwestern region of North America. You can color this region yellow. The geography was quite different from the forests of the Iroquois, so the Lakota Sioux had a different lifestyle. Draw or write about the flatlands that you see here in these pictures. Very few trees existed for building houses for them, and houses could not be permanent. You see, the Lakota Sioux tribe moved a lot, following the herds of buffalo that migrated to different areas on the prairie, depending on the seasons. So they lived in collapsible teepees that folded up when they had to move. And what were their teepees made of? Buffalo skin, of course. Draw a buffalo with this tribe on your map, because this major natural resource was the source of Lakota Sioux's survival in countless waves. Meat was turned into buffalo jerky to eat. Buffalo hides became blankets and cloaks for the cold prairie winters. Buffalo skins were tanned into clothing. Buffalo bones were used as tools and weapons. The stomach was used for pots and things to eat out of. The brains were used as a chemical to soften the hides to turn into clothing. Even their poop or dung was used as fuel for their fires. Very little was wasted. The next Native American tribe we are going to talk about today is the Pueblo tribe that settled in the southwest. You can color this region pink. Unlike the Lakota Sioux tribe's movable teepees, the Pueblo's homes were permanent. 
Their geography was hot and dry, desert lands. So baking bricks out of the clay was natural to the area. And that way they crafted the first apartment homes known as Pueblo houses. You can still go to states like New Mexico today and see how they were built over thousands of years ago. Draw the desert and the adobe bricks along with the Pueblo tribe on your map to capture these ideas. Known for their hot chili peppers, the Pueblo people had to farm in unique ways because of their lack of rain to this region. They farmed corn called maize and vegetables. The Quaquiatl tribe's environment was very different from the Pueblos. Instead of drought affecting their lifestyle, they had to deal with the wet conditions of rain on a regular basis. Color this region green. You can see that the states of Washington, Oregon, and parts of Canada are included. Similar to the Iroquois tribe, the forested environment enabled the Quaquiatl tribe to build their homes with the natural resources of the many, many trees. Their homes looked a little different from the longhouses though, more like sheds, but they were a very colorful people group. They would decorate their homes by painting them to display artwork that connected to their culture. Famous for the totem pole, the, the, or the totem poles that were carved out of trunks of cedar trees, these people honored birds and other animals that provided for them in their environment. Draw one of their homes and a totem pole near the Quaquiatl on your map. The last tribe discussed in today's homework video is the Inuit tribe, located in the Arctic North in places like Alaska and Northern Canada. You can color this region blue. Northern Alaska is cold, and with snow on the ground for over five months out of the year, these people grappled with the cold temperatures of their environment. The geography is vastly different than the other areas we have mentioned so far. Since very little vegetation could survive in the Arctic climate, the Inuit could not depend solely on plants for food, so they were primarily hunters. Sea mammals were usually hunted during the winter when they were out on the ice. However, some sea mammals, like whales, were hunted in the open water. Seal was hunted for their meat and skin for clothing and blankets to keep warm. Beluga whales were hunted for their skin, food, like muktuk, outer skin and blubber, and even their homes to build the frames of their summer homes with. Winter homes were mainly igloos made out of snow and ice, but kept warm inside with fires. You can draw a whale or an igloo next to your notes about the geography of the Inuit region.